Ben Wall Pears got pants on. Take a look at this. I'm sorry, but long pants and tennis is the silliest thing I've ever seen. What's the weather like in Marrakesh? Isn't it hot in Morocco? Wouldn't it be hot? Today on Coffee Break, tennis, the fastest growing tennis talk show in the world. I'm your host, Matt Bradshaw. This is your co-host, Mr. Goat, the talking tennis cat who loves Roger Federer and likes Novak Djokovic a little bit better than Nadal. Uh, Marion Vida, a light among darkness, or should Novak Djokovic avoid returning to his ex? Novak Djokovic is going to get the band back together, it looks like. What else do we got today's show? Uh, we got a little bit on the Rafa Nadal win over Sverev. Uh, some people say uh, it's not that impressive because Sverev played really poorly. I, I think... It's safe to say that Rafa is looking very good on clay this year. We'll talk a little bit about who could challenge Rafa at the French in the rest of the clay season. Uh, we'll look at some of the tournaments going on right now, get you all caught up in what's going on in the tennis world. And of course, we're going to read some of your comments that stood out and struck me. Let's get into it. Mr. Goat, how are you feeling today? Doing well? I'm doing well as well. It was 56 degrees in Morocco at the start of the match. So comment below, would you wear the long pants like Benoit Paire, or would you be more like Gil Simon and wear the shorts despite the 56 degree cold weather? Trust me, when you play tennis, you warm up pretty quick running around on that tennis court. <laughs> yeah, you don't care because you're covered in fur. It doesn't matter for you. You're a fur person. I'm not. Yeah, I had to I had to go to the Weather Channel app to find out what the weather was. I'm I'm a crazy person. Today's episode of Coffee Break Tennis is brought to you by Will Hamilton over at Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Fuzzy Yellow Balls, they invented online tennis instruction right now. Right now they've got an awesome free three-part video series all about building your own customized singles playbook. It turns out that when you go out on a tennis court and just react to the ball and don't have any kind of go-to plays in your head to try to run or try to set up in points, you make a lot more unforced errors. Unforced errors are less about technique and more about poor decision-making. You always hear it in the pros talk about it on the commentators on TV. They always say that was poor shot selection by the player. So it, it applies to everyone out there. If you're a tennis player, uh, go to singles.fuzzyyellowballs.com forward slash coffee break. That way they know I sent you. And I think tonight is the last night at midnight. If you want to get your... They're actually shipping physical playbooks that they built for you. They're going to mail them to your home. You'll get your own playbook. Today's the last day you can get free shipping on that playbook sent to your house. So check that out. You can also just click the link down below in the description below this video. You're a lot more alert today, Mr. Goat. You want to sniff the coffee? Mmm, smells good. So let's go to the Twitters to kick things off. You can follow me on the Tweeters at Coffee Break Tens, T E N S. Can't fit the whole word tennis in Twitter because Twitter has banned the word tennis. They don't like tennis. Uh, this is from Plamen, Plamen, at P T A T O V, at Coffee Break Tens. Djokovic seen training with Marion Vida. Video, interesting development. Uh, and more news is trickling out. It's not official yet. Now, Damien, who lives an international life of mystery over in Spain, <laughs> he's always he's always hitting at the nicest places in the world. <sighs> Damien. I hope I'm in Spain to hit with Damien one day. He can teach me how to slide on the red clay. Great stuff. Shows are getting funnier. Yesterday, I was at one of my local clubs. Yeah, one of his local clubs. We're talking five-star resorts here. Puente Romano in Marbella. Marbella? Marbella? Do they do the double, a in Sp double L in Spain? Marbella? Marbella? Uh, and who should I see hitting balls? None other than Mr. Joker Face. Who was right by his side? Mr. Vita Face. Joker trying to recapture the old magic. We will see. So that leads me to a news story that we found on the internet. It was very tricky to find it because there's not a good news service for tennis people anywhere in the world, but I did it. Is Marion Vida a light among darkness, or should Novak Djokovic avoid returning to the X? Djokovic is set to reunite, reunite with Vida. There's an old adage that warns people to never go back to relationships of the past, for it will inevitably end in the same manner. I don't like that opening sentence because it makes it sound like the Marion Vida-led team. You know, Marion Vida is basically kind of like Southern Luti. You know, they brought in Boris Becker, but Marion Vida was always there, uh, just like Severin Luti. Uh, I remember I got to talk with Paul Anaconda, Paul Anacone, and he basically said to me that Severin Luti was a big help to kind of help him figure out the best way to help Roger. You know, you're a new coach, big name like Anaconda or Becker or Agassi. 
So I'm sure Mary and Vida did a lot of the same kind of stuff Severn Luti did. Say you get a big pro new high profile coach like Boris Becker added onto the team, someone like uh, Mary and Vida or Sev Luti, they're going to kind of help you acclimate to the player, help you fit in with the team and show you like, okay, well, this is how Joker or Roger has always done it. Of course, we're open to your new ideas, high profile coach. So anyways, I'm just trying to say it wasn't like Vida was a problem and it's, it's going to end with that horrible stuff that Vida did all over again. No, it's not. If anything, it's going to end with good things again. But for many, as footage emerged of Marion Vida on court with Novak Djokovic, it was the light at the end of a miserably dark tunnel. That's more like it, baby. Since Vida's sudden departure from the Serbs' backroom team, Djokovic has seemingly been on a never-ending downward spiral, you can say that again, which climaxed with his third straight defeat at the start of a miserable 2018. As he did with Vida, he also fired fitness coach Phil Gritz and physiotherapist Milian Amanovic. Just a year ago, Djokovic decided to radically reform his team once more, ditching Agassi, Stepanik, blah, blah, blah. We already know all that. So here's the interesting question they ask. Is Djokovic the same person now that he was during his glory days? And if not, Will the same approach to handling him see him return to the peak of his power? So basically, can Mary and Vida, we all know something's up mentally with Djokovic, right? Maybe his elbow hurts or something. He said in Miami, he's finally playing pain-free. So it's definitely a mental thing. Will Mary and Vida help Novak get back in that same state of mind from before? Uh, I thought this was interesting. Though the elbow injury which he undertook a small medical intervention, yeah, remember that, earlier this year has undoubtedly played a role in Djokovic's plight. Some, like Greg Ruzetsky and Johnny Mac McEnroe, have leveled the charge against him that his downward spiral was largely due to a loss of the mentality that saw him so fiercely dominate the sport, particularly, particularly in 2011, 2015, and the first half of 2016. Can Vida help get Djokovic back to basics? Uh, last page right here. A settling arm around the shoulder can't be underestimated at this stage. Here they, they dump on Agassi, which I like. Agassi's absence for large periods was surely a factor that hindered... Agassi was never there. Remember, like, he wasn't going to go to the Australian Open? It's like, come on, that's the whole point. That's why they hired you, Agassi. He wasn't going to... Because he had a snowboarding accident with Jazz. <laughs> Vida could be the ideal man to help Novak move on should they reunite. Is Marion Vida even interested in a long-term commitment? Can he commit to a full-time role or is this merely a show of support until Djokovic finds his feet? And of course, most importantly, is Djokovic... Sorry, Mr. Goat. Is Djokovic fully committed to finding his form? Good question. No, I'm never going to be like those guys. Mr. Goat says, remember how you ragged on all those riders who said Federal will never win again when he won the Australian Open this year? And I'm simply saying to Mr. Goat, talking tennis cat, of course I'm not going to do that. I, I do think Djokovic could win again, but boy, it sure does look a lot worse for Djokovic right now than it did in Roger's lowest moments. You know, I think of Roger's lowest moment, and that was coming this close to making the finals at Wimbledon when he wasn't 100% healthy, losing to uh, Miloš. I think what's been going on with Novak... A little bit lower than that, so even harder to imagine him coming back. But of course, Marion Vida, this might be a step in the right direction. Like he said, Agassi wasn't around. Marion Vida, just someone who's being there, who really cares. That's my whole problem with Agassi. If anyone's wondering why I went so hard on Agassi, I feel like Agassi basically said, ooh, ooh, I want that. Give that to me. And never really thought anything about Djokovic, you know, and it never appeared to Agassi. It's like, oh, a lot of people think I'd be a good fit for Djokovic, and he's one of the biggest names in tennis right now, so that'll help me be back in the spotlight. I feel like it's really more about Agassi, and he never really thought too much about how he could help Djokovic. It was more about helping himself. Anyone would think, oh, this will be easy. You know, I, I go sit in a nice seat at all the big tennis tournaments and clap and stand up and do this when Djokovic wins points. And as he wins the majors, I'll take some of the credit saying I'm a brilliant coach. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe I'm way wrong. But to me, that's what it was all about. That's why I've lost a lot of respect for Agassi. Plus, he also said that nonsense about uh, Nadal is better than Federer despite having less grand slams because of the head-to-head. -head. That's silly too, Agassi. Come on. <sighs> I swear, some people just say things to get attention. Not me. Oh my god, I crumpled the other stories. And I still have Djokovic Vida. <laughs> Touch volley. Uh, this is from Sports360.com. Rafa Nadal dominates Alexander Zverev in Davis Cup. Things learned from the Spaniards' victory. 
Uh, good but not flawless. Considering he only played five matches in 2018 entering this Davis Cup weekend, Nadal did a great job against a player like Sfera, who was ranked number four in the world, coming off a runner-up showing in Miami. Spaniard's movement. This is what I noticed because I didn't watch the whole match, but I saw a lot of it. Uh, I saw a lot of Cole Schreiber too. The Spaniard's movement, which typically puts him in a class apart on this surface, was top-notch. That's absolutely true. Uh, the hip, the knee, whatever was hampering his movement earlier in the year, it, it's paid off. Nadal was smart to say, okay, I need more time. I'm just going to skip like all these hardcore tournaments and get ready for clay. Nadal has done it. Uh, you can't blame Nadal or Federer for saying, I'm getting older. I know I still have the game to win on my favorite surface because it's my house. Wimbledon's my house, Roger. Uh, the French Open's my house, and all the other clay tournaments are my house, Rafa. Welcome to my house. Baby, take control now. You know, if they had more grass tournaments, there's only, Roger usually only plays two a year. Only recently did he start playing Stutt Stuttgart and getting three grass court tournaments a year. Only Two a year. Think about how many more tournaments Roger would have won if it was like clay, where you know every year Rafa's got a shot to win four or five clay titles. What if Roger had a chance to win five grass titles every year? Enough on that, though. Stepping on the court, knowing he had the win to keep the host nation's hopes alive in the tie, Nadal revealed no sign of nerves, save four six break points, showed little to no rust against Fair. Here, interesting here, 31 year old did commit 38 unforced errors. Was it against Cole Sharp? I just remember seeing him uh, double fault on a break point. Like, that wasn't very Rafa like, but still won in straight sets twice. Uh, 21 winners on 38 unforced errors. And then a lot of people said Sverev produced an error strewn performance to solve the young German fire. 57 unforced errors on top of 15 winners. This is from Reem Abulil. Abulil. Uh, she wrote that story. Anyways. One more thing on the doll at the French Open, there will be new rules. Comment below, very curious. Will it affect Rafa? You're going to have the shot clock, 25 seconds between points instead of a previous 20. So here's the big difference. Five more seconds because they're going to start enforcing the rule. Can Rafa get through in 25 seconds in between each and every point? Only five minutes during the warm-up. Uh, only one minute after the warm-up finishes until the match must begin. In the juniors, there will be no service lets. In the juniors... What does that mean? Does that mean that's coming to big time tennis too? So there you go. Rafa looks pretty good. Some people are saying Sasha wasn't ready for the clay yet. Didn't have much time to practice on the stuff. I mean, he handled David Ferrer pretty easy. So I'm I'm not going to go ahead and say that it was Misha not ready for the clay. Because uh, David Ferrer, remember, this is a guy who probably would have won a French Open if it wasn't for Rafa. Uh, David Ferrer is a great clay court player. David Ferrer. And uh, Misha handled him, no problem. Sorry, Sasha, not Misha. So uh, I, let's credit Rafa. Rafa's moving great. Moff, Rafa's got the forehand work, and Rafa was serving well. Uh, I, I think some of the stats in that match against Sasha Sverev, what was it, Rafa was, he was winning over 60% on second serve. I mean, it's just typical clay court tennis from Rafa. That's it. Could he be better? Could he be cleaner? Sure, but this is his first match, first two matches back on clay. All right, let's read a couple comments, and we'll get out of here. Lavanya singer Dinesh at Feli Lopez and David Ferrer are the best looking dudes on tour, in my honest opinion. And very accomplished to boot. At Coffee Break Tens, Matt, you brought up useless Eugenie. I dreamy of Eugenie Bouchard is my nickname for in your video, so I had to say something. Uh, I agree with you, Lavanya, but what about Grigor? Grigor is very good looking. Of course, Roger Federer, most good looking man in history. Invite the light readings this is a comment. Comment below what you think. Uh, honestly, I don't see the purpose of Davis Cup. You have the Olympics just saying it's a distraction for top players as if the tennis season isn't already grueling. I like Davis Cup, but I will say this is what I commented back to invite the light readings. It's a little confusing for new tennis fans because you got to explain like, OK, we have the Olympics, but then we have the Davis Cup, which is kind of like the Olympics. But then now we've got this thing called Laver Cup, which is kind of like, well, it's kind of like a mix of it's a little confusing. Marie Rodan. Uh, did I say your last name right? Marie Rodan Rodan. I wish Vavrinka, Stanislav Vavrinka, Vavrinka was back and at 100% both physically and mentally. He is a brute on clay. I think he could beat Nadal. I think he could too because Vavrinka is one of those guys who if he has a great day, he can beat pretty much anyone like he did in Monte Carlo that one time against Roger. Who do you think has a chance to beat a healthy Nadal and Clay. Delpo, if he's rested, easy draw. Go fan, if he's healthy. Dominic Team, does he have the consistency? Of course, Federer, too bad he isn't playing. Oh, too bad he isn't still 31 like Nadal. Uh, I, I don't see anyone beating Nadal on Clay. Not when it matters most. Uh, you know, we could always have some incredible performance from someone. Of course, Dominic Team is a great Clay court player, but 
Do you really think Dominic Team is going to beat Rafa at the French Open? I don't. David Goffin? I mean, he's he's basically Simona Halep. That's not fair. I was comparing him to Federer at the end of last year. Now I'm saying he's Simona Halep. I mean, he, he's a great mover. Uh, he's got great tennis IQ. He's taking the ball earlier and uh, uh, being more aggressive, but he's hardly played. I mean, he's not going to be ready now. The eye injury was really sad how that worked out for him. Let's look at things around the internet. Uh, ATP World Tour posted this on Instagram. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram at Coffee Break Tennis, just how we spell it here. Big foe meets Big Harden. <laughs> Damien, is this your club? Is this Marbella? Marbella. There's Djokovic with, uh, is that his brother? Nice hair. <laughs> Dasha Gavrilova did this very unflattering pose. Um, it's interesting. So just remember this, because look at the rankings. Roger is only 100 points away from Rafa. Rafa basically has to win every clay match that he won last year all over again to stay on top. He can do it, but it, it, that's a lot. That's not a lot of, not a lot of breathing room there. Novak Djokovic still 13 in the world somehow. Uh, here is what we've got going on in the tennis world. We got Marrakesh where it's so cold. Uh, Benoit Paris got to wear long pants and look like a doofus. Uh, in Marrakesh, uh, some of our seeds: Kyle Edmund, Albert Ramos, Vanolas, Cole Pickle, Cole Schreiber, Dogman, Dogo Polov, Benoit Paire, of course, Hasa, uh, Richard Gasquet, Misha Sverev, the older brother. Uh, we got a more interesting draw in Houston this year. Of course, John Isner. We'll see what he can do on the clay. Don't forget, I think it's been almost like, how long has it been? Has it been 10 years? I can't remember, but Isner was this close to beating Rafa and it was the first or second round at the French Open one year. Isner can do stuff on clay. Uh, Kyrgios will return in Merrick, or Kyrgios is going to return in Houston. It'll be interesting to see what he's up to. I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, pulled out of the tournament because he's injured or something again. We got Verdasco, Ryan Harrison, Jackie Sock. Uh, okay, some interesting stuff over there. Thanks for watching Coffee Break Tennis. Don't forget to check out Will Hamilton's singles playbook made just for you. Still, you can get free shipping tonight, but you got to go over there now. Singles.fuzzyyellowballs.com forward slash coffee break. Thanks for watching the show today. Of course, comment below. What do you think about the news with Djokovic and Vida? Is this the right move? To me, it seems like the only thing we could try, that he can try, that's left. Uh, I think it might actually help. But of course, tell me what you think about it. And also, what do you think about the Rafa stuff? Is he going to win it all? It's only 100 points, baby. See ya!